Well, hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I go about identifying rocks that I don't know. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you like videos like this, I post every single week. Okay, so I have a rock here and I am not entirely sure what this rock is. Now I get this question a lot of, can you help me identify my rock? How can I go about finding the name for my rock? Now there are several different ways to go about identifying rocks. Some are more scientific, others are just kind of using like what you already know about the rocks. So the biggest tips that I can give you when trying to identify rocks is just become familiar with your topic. So follow rock accounts, um, watch videos about rocks that you're interested, find people who are located in your area that can help you. Another big help that you're going to find is using books. So I've talked about this book in particular several times on my channel. It is my absolute favorite, especially if you're trying to identify rocks that you have personally found in your area. I believe they have books like this for all of the United States. I'm not entirely sure, but this is the Minnesota Rock and Mineral book, and it is such a game changer when trying to identify rocks. So this rock here that we're gonna be identifying is a Minnesota rock. It is one that I found right on the beach. Um, I actually found it on the shores of Lake Superior. Now, you might look through your entire book and still not be able to identify what your rock is, then you can move on to books like this. So this is the Smithsonian Handbook to Rocks and Minerals. Now this is the more kind of scientific approach to identifying your rocks. It goes through and it tells you exactly what the group that your rock belongs in, the composition, its hardness, its specific gravity, cleavage, it's how it fractures and things like that. So this one is, is a lot more in depth with the, the scientific nature of identifying your rocks. However, once you know how to use books like this, they are really, really beneficial, especially for rocks that either you did not find in your area or that you just couldn't seem to find in books like these. Because even though this book is amazing, it doesn't have all of the examples of exactly the rock that you might be looking for. So it has jaspers in here, for example, but it doesn't have every single tiny little detailed jasper that you could find. So if you're not able to see a picture of it and compare what it looks like to the picture exactly, you might think, oh, well, it must not be a jasper or it must not be an agate or some type of basalt because you can't find that exact picture in the book. But that might not be the case. They just might not have that specific picture that looks like your rock. And the same can be said about the rock and mineral book here. As you can see, they really only have like one picture of what the rock looks like. Here's one with a few. If you can match up the hardness, the specific gravity, the cleavage, and the fracture, you are going to 98% know that yes, this is the rock, even if it doesn't match the picture exactly. Another resource that I use is my handy dandy cell phone. <laughs> So that's honestly usually one of the first places that I get started. I start to kind of Google and look around with the names that I think that my rock might be. So for example, our rock here, I think that this is probably going to be some type of Jasper. It might not necessarily kind of have that waxy luster that a lot of the Jaspers I have have, but I think it's because it has this sort of limonite staining on it that might be why it's a little bit more difficult to identify. And you can also see kind of towards the bottom that there is, is some white area here. So it might also have some other material mixed into it, which can also make rocks more difficult to identify when it's more than just one material um, or more than just one mineral, which a lot of rocks are more than just one mineral, which can be difficult to identify. So getting to identifying this rock, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at my rock and I'm just going to start Googling, honestly. So I can see here that my rock is mainly a red rock. So I'm going to kind of type in some of the characteristics of my rock here to kind of just narrow down the options that this rock could be. So we're going to type in red rock with, and I, I would probably say with limonite staining, but um, even keeping it more simple, if you don't know what limonite staining is, maybe I'll just say red rock with yellow on it. Okay. So now that's very, very broad. 
So we can already start to see a bunch of different options here. I like to personally go through the images. Like honestly, this first picture kind of looks a lot like the rock that we have here. So this says red rock with yellow intrusion stock photo. Now that doesn't really seem to help us um, but I can see some other pictures down here and we can already start to see that a lot of these are Jasper. So Jasper rocks, let's look at that one. That looks pretty similar to what we have here. Jasper rocks with red and yellow. Oh, and one like right here. This is Southwest New Mexico. So not similar to where we're at. You can also narrow down your search by saying where you're at. So red rock with yellow, Minnesota. Okay, and we can see some more rocks that are coming up. And again, I like to just look right at the images because images, because the images are easier for me to um, look at and help me identify what the rock is. So again, I'm kind of still seeing some of the same um, type of results. This one's interesting, red wood, red, yellow, green, banded cobble, Oregon. I mean, it looks kind of similar to this, but honestly, not really. So let's take a look at some more of these. So now that I'm kind of seeing that this might be a Jasper, I'm going to take a look at some of the books that I have here. First, I'm going to start with my Minnesota book because of course I am in Minnesota. This rock is a Minnesota rock. And so I'm hoping that we'll be able to find it in here. Now it did mention it probably being a Jasper, which is kind of what I was thinking. So we're going to go through and find Jasper in here and then see what Jasper has to say. Okay, so here is my Jasper page. It tells me where I could look for this rock, what to look for. Hard reddish stone with a waxy feel and appearance, often found alongside hematite. Ooh, so this right here might be another clue. Now we know that the rock doesn't really have a waxy look to it. If I look at it, you can kind of see, maybe it almost looks a little bit powdery to me. But if I rinse this off, I wonder if it would be more waxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get this wet and dry it off and then see exactly what it looks like when it is dry. Because maybe the outer powdery look is just because it's a little bit dirty. Okay, so I have washed and dried the rock and some of that powdery kind of substance did come off a little bit. So as you can see here, um, it actually does maybe look a little bit more waxy. Still, I don't know, it just doesn't appear to be as waxy as like what I'm used to for a Jasper. So I think that we are on the right track. So let's take a look again and continue looking at this Jasper page. Also, as I was looking right here, Jaspalite. This is kind of looking, I don't know, almost similar I would say to what our rock looks like, right? It's kind of almost got like those bands of Jasper. We also have banded Jasper, but I think that that looks a little bit different. I also really like this book too, because it gives you um, some background information on the rock, but Jaspalite, I think that gives us a good hint. So going off of those two things, there are two things now that I would like to take a look at is hematite and then also Jaspalite. Now, because in this book, it only has it as a picture and it's not a specific category, the next one that goes on to is junk. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use again my phone and see if I can find um, what a Jaspalite is and see if I can find any more similar pictures that could look closer to what our rock looks like. Okay, so let's take a look at Jaspalite. The results that I'm seeing here is kind of more of a banded version of Jasper, which, ooh, like right there. So this top picture, oh, look at that. Okay, so the top right corner looks really similar, I think, um, to our rock. Like the top left and the bottom right look very similar to what our rock looks like. So I'm honestly gonna guess that this is probably a Jaspalite. But let's continue to look. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks really similar. I think ours has more of that limonite staining, some of the yellow, but you can see some yellow mixed in, especially in that top left one. Now I'm gonna say Jaspalite with yellow. And see if that'll give us anything. Oh yeah, so you can see there's definitely, like look at this one here, there's definitely Jaspalite that has yellow on it. So if I searched Jaspalite with yellow and really nothing came up, I would probably then say, oh, maybe this isn't Jaspalite because it does have that yellow on it. But you can see that there are options. Oh, and look at that one that do show that yellow on it as well. The other thing that I'm gonna try to exclude now is the hematite. And I should know what hematite is, but I kind of forgot. 
So let's go to our book again and look at hematite. So this is hematite. Um, definitely not then <laughs> what our rock looks like. Here's a red version of it. Hmm, I don't know actually, maybe that red looks familiar. So let's look up hematite online and see if we're able to find hematite that looks kind of like our rock. Otherwise I'm leaning more towards the jasperite. So banded red jasper hematite, let's look that up. Okay, okay, so this I think is looking a little bit closer to what we might have here. Now ours is has a lot more um, texture to it than these ones do, for example, um, but it could just be that these samples are more worn compared to the one that we have, which is a little bit more raw and probably hasn't been like tumbled around on a beach as much as these other ones. But I'm kind of thinking that this might be what we have, it might even be kind of like a brachiated version of it. Brachiated is just kind of like where it gets broken up but then still stays together as a rock because the bands aren't quite as clear cut on this as they are on the pictures here. But I'm gonna guess that this is a banded red jasper hematite. I haven't done a hardness test yet on it, but I do wanna double check that this is at least the hardness of a jasper since it is mainly red. So the jasper's hardness is a seven and the hematite says it's between a five and a six. So the jasper for sure should not be able to be scratched by my knife that I'm going to use, my steel knife. And it may or may not leave a scratch on the hematite because knives are about a 5.5 to six. If you have like a steel knife, then it's about a 6.5. And the reason I know this is because of the Mohs scale of hardness, something that you can just Google. Let's see if this is able to be scratched. If the red is able to be scratched, then we can automatically say, okay, for sure not red Jasper, we're back to square one. So let's try that out. Okay, so I got my black folder out here so that you can see it a little bit better compared to the white table where it's a little bit more difficult, kind of washes the color out. But we're gonna see if the knife here can scratch the red part, which I'm assuming is the Jasper, and then the yellow part here, which might either be limonite or some of that like hematite in it as well. So let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, so I'm gonna take kind of this red part right here and give it a scratch, and then maybe um, a bit over here as well, and then kind of right in that yellow bit. Probably not gonna be able to show you on the camera because I'd have to hold my phone and the knife, which uh, seems a little bit dangerous, so not gonna do that. But um, I will let you know and we'll see if we leave any marks on the rock. Okay, so I'm really gonna go at it here with my knife. Also, don't judge my technique, okay? I'm doing my best. All right, so I did a little bit of a scratch kind of in that area. Let's try right here. Okay, and then let's go in at the yellow. All right, so let's take a look at the results. Okay, so this red part right here is where I scratched originally, and there is no mark. I was unable to leave a mark with my knife. Here, this red part down here, I also tried to scratch and again, there was no mark. Now, as you can see, I was able to scratch out a mark in my yellow bit here, which is interesting. So the reason that this is interesting is because if it's the hematite, it would be able to be scratched, but I am surprised with it being able to be scratched so aggressively that there were like bits of it left over, which tells me that it's probably even less than a five and five to six level hardness. So looking here at this Mohs scale of hardness, we just used this knife glass plate. And as you can see, that's kind of 5.5. Um, and it was not able to scratch the red, which I am still then assuming that it is red Jasper. However, it was able to really, really scratch that yellow stuff. So now you can see what's beneath the knife is a copper penny. So I'm gonna get a penny and I wanna see if it is able to leave a mark with the copper penny. If it is, then we for sure can say that that yellow stuff is not hematite. Okay, so I'm back with my penny and we're gonna see if we are able to leave a mark in the yellow area of this rock with our penny. So again, I'm probably gonna go at it here um, in that yellow spot there to see if I can leave a mark. Okay, so if you can see that, you can see that there is yellow that was left over 
on the penny. So it was able to scratch just with the penny here. So we can see that this material is far below the accepted level for hematite. So then what I am gonna guess is that this is probably limonite. I would say that this is a red jasper with limonite. As you can see, the limonite hardness would be about a four to a 5.5, which would then be able to be scratched by our knife. So I am leaning a little bit more towards the limonite because hematite is a bit harder and it definitely would not have been able to be scratched by our knife, which it very clearly was. So we are gonna go with red, banded red jasper with limonite. So that is kind of how I go through and identify my rocks. Now, am I 100% accurate all the time? Probably not. I am not a, a true geologist. I'm an amateur geologist. Um, so these are just the ways that I do and the methods that I use that um, work for me. And I'm not super duper particular on if I get it exactly accurate. I just kind of want like the right categories because when I am placing my rocks and putting them in my containers and organizing them, I just want them to be kind of in, in similar categories. So using those would be my recommendation for when you're looking for rocks. And like I said, it would be a lot easier trying to find just individual rocks and not um, ones that are mixed with other minerals and materials. Again, using books, using Google, really helps, especially looking at pictures, using the hardness test, looking for translucency, what kind of luster the rock has, which again is just kind of like, does it give off a shine? Does it give off a waxy luster? Is it more powdery? Things like that can really help you to identify the rocks that you have. So I really hope that that was helpful and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video and if you did, give it a big old thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel. I make new videos every week and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.